Question three. The cells in this circuit, figure two, have zero internal resistance. Currents are in the direction shown by the arrows. R1's variable resistor can go between naught and 10. So that's written up there. Calculate, uh, sorry, write down the relationship between I1, I2, and I3. So this is Kirchhoff's first law. The, all the current entering a point has to leave it. So I1 is going in, plus I2 is going in. It must equal all the current leaving, which is I3. R1 is adjusted until it has a value of zero. So that's basically a piece of wire there. State the potential difference across R3. So there's a clue here. Keyword state there means you should just be able to write down the answer. There's no calculation. Well, if that is taken out of the picture there, that doesn't exist. You simply have a circuit which has a power supply here, no internal resistance. So it's got 10 volts all that 10 volts must be dropped across there, so it's got to be 10. Determine the current I2. Okay, so this is going to have 10 volts across it. Draw that over here. This has 12 volts across it, so if we go up 10 volts, we have to go up another 2 volts in order to get to there. So 10 volts across that one, 2 volts across that one. So we have, we just use Ohm's law for this. Um, R is equal to V over I. Rearrange that for current. So I is equal to V over R, which is equal to, there are two volts across a resistance of 10 ohms. So it's a 0 0.2, and let's be careful with sig fig here. Um, everything seems to be to two, so it's 0 0.20 to 2SF and the unit is amps. State and explain what happens to the potential difference across R2 as the resistance R1 is gradually increased from zero. Right, what happens to the potential across here? Okay, so if we increase this resistance here, then we're gonna have the same potential across here, but now it's got to split in order to get around this loop here. It's got to split. Some of it will be across here, some of it will be across here. So if this, if there's smaller potential across here, because some of it's, some of the 10 is across here instead, then this point here will drop, which means that there's got to be a greater potential across there. So it's going to increase. So um, the PD across R2 will increase. Right, let me explain why that is again. So as R1 increases, V is equal to IR, so the PD across R1 increases. So the PD across there increases, which means that there's less, because it's got to have 10 volts going around that loop there. So there's got to be less for R3. So the PD across R3 reduces. Now, the PD across R3 plus the PD across R2, this resistor here, has to equal 12. So the PD across R3, so I'm going to just call that V3, plus the PD across R2 must equal 12. So if V3 drops, V2 rises. Okay, 